Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a crazy week. Just hit 10k subscriber. Thank you very much, everyone. Today we are going to talk about a geometry node node tree that I built. In my opinion, that is like a crazy powerful tools, especially if you want to make some chrome type artwork. So let's see what we can make out of this. So this is a picture on my Instagram. So you can make such thing like this. Let's quickly take a look in the blender. That is the project file. There's actually two node tree. One is called CTN V1 and one is CTN V1 plus. So CTN stands for curve to mesh. So everything that you see transparent, it's built for CTN. You can build this kind of curve and you can manipulate the shape of the curve and the one plus that you can do the same thing as v1 but also you can make some array so you see this part of the texture is metal it's built for the ctm v1 plus so it's instancing this object on this curve and both of these you can make animation for that if you see it if i play the timeline you can see you can make animation that is growing and I really hope you can watch through the whole video because more toward the end of this video the function just get more and more I really want to share this to each one of you let's jump in to discover these powerful tools so first we have this setup basically the same idea as the previous video so if you didn't watch that video, I recommend you go watch that video. So I already set this as a shadow catcher that will be disappear in the cycle. First, let's take a look at the basic curve to mesh tools. So I will import that in my SS library. At the end of the video, I'll teach you how to put this node group that you download into your own SS library. So how do I import this? It's you create a geometry and you create a geometry node. Okay, and you just drag it from your SS library. So now it's finished importing. And I drag the, the other the plus one as well. And we will talk about that later. So that is these two. We will talk about this today. So it's basically the same. Just uh, you see here, it's uh, one more function is for the array. So you will see that later. Okay, so now we have import now we can just change this name for, for import anyway it's not important so now switch to this ctm v1 it's for curve to mesh so now i got that you can see over here see all this and that's is what is inside how do we use that first i can make i can name this to be c to m okay now we create a curve so i call this like a curve one so i just drag this curve that we just create to the curve socket so now we have this curve to draw go to this curve and go to the atom mode and we can delete all this vertex and now we try to draw something so go to this draw mode and set this to be surface and poly so if we try to draw we'll get this curve but it's relative big I might change some of the default size so don't worry about that so now we have to change the radius so you see this xy you can type it like this so now it's thin enough and also if you drag this xy individually you can get like a different size like a, this is like a flat plan or you can try the other way let's try that okay so you, you got the idea so what is the z do 
so the z is for scaling the x y so if now you feel like uh, it's a little bit too thin but you don't want to tweak this so precisely you can just drag the z so it will become like the overall control now we can draw things go to this curve and start to draw you can delete this And now I'm restyling because just have to show you what's the function. So let's not get into too much about super detail. Okay, so now you might feel like uh, your curve is a little bit junky. So in this case, you can just click A to select O. You right click and go to this smooth and just like keep clicking several times and we'll smooth out. So now you see here, it's intersecting to the our model, but actually it's not supposed to because the curve is actually on top of this model. So let's see the wireframe. So you see this wire, the sample ray of this wire is actually not high enough. So let's go back to change this sample. So if we drag this, you can see the sample go like lower or higher so the lower the number get the higher sample rate so if you tweak this it will like a fit okay now we got this let's take a look at some of the function so we already see this and we know the sample rate the round edge is like uh, for it to be more rounded or just like a flat and this is like a shade smooth so this is not shade smooth and click here it's shade smooth and let's see the noise so if i drag this noise you can get some noise and if you drag this the noise seed you can make some animation for that if you just use keyframe to do that so this noise is one of the things that you can control in the geometry node so go here the noise you can change the noise the noise pattern and also you can make it like a different contrast you can do that so if I like to have like a smaller noise, just make the number bigger. So you get this idea, it's about noise. Okay, let's reset that. And here, you see this, it's another place that we can control. This control is the shape of the curve. It's very powerful. Let's see if we set this tube to be bigger, like this. So let's drag this to see. Boom. It just got like a, like this. You have this portfolio to change. So you can just drag this like that. You can drag it like that. Okay, you can drag it every kind of shape you want. So now you can have a lot of design using this. So whenever you draw, go to the curve and whatever you draw, the curve will look just like that. So you see there's another one, it's called start and this is final. Now we are in the final state of this curve. So this is here, it means it have a start state. So what is the final in the start? It come to here, this part. This means we can cut it, this curve. So now it means you can make animation. See here. Okay, now we know we can make animation. So what is this start mean? So if you see, we drag like this, it become flat, it become this shape. So it means if you want to make an animation, it's like a groin, so it can 
or here from here so maybe I will like it to be like this and this I will like to make it a little bit weirder so let's say it's like this okay so when we grow when we go back it slowly become this shape okay so that's what these do so if like the final stage is flat it will grow like this so you get the idea you can be creative about this let's switch it back okay now what else we have so we already talk about the noise and here another part is very very powerful so let's see what is that so if now we have making some flat stuff like this just set this radius to be like a more flat like this kind of flat things but it's not warping on the model right it's like uh, intersecting to that so now it comes to this tail target so the body is our target so we want the curve to tell as the same normal as the target so let's just drag this body body or any object you want so let's just drag this to here immediately the curve will warp on this body everything is warping on the face even like the lips let's see if we just draw it like this so it's perfectly warp on this body even that's without warping it's not perfect and that's with so now you can actually draw things like uh, very perfectly on the face okay now let's see what else we have we have this tail offset let's see what's this do so if i just keep dragging it just like uh, turn the whole thing like a uh, round or if i want it to be like a uh, 90 degree on the face i can turn it like that okay so let's set this back for right now so what is this spin do it's make things like a spiral so now if i give a number for this spin maybe like 360 you will see something but this this number have to be like a quite big maybe like times 10 okay now you can see this is become like a spiral it's like a spinning so if you use this and you combine with this it will be like a turning so this is another way that you can do the animation and if you cut it like uh, this it will go like that and maybe set this to be like this and this it will be more like uh, it's growing out right so that is the spin too and finally we set material so let's give a material for our ctm let's create a material for the glass and let's make a most basic glass roughness and let's go set material and just choose this glass so now if we're in the cycle you can see yeah so now you can 
use this to make many cool designs that are to be metallic you can make some chrome type you can play around with different material and here is one more thing that I didn't mention on the top of this it's called base mesh this is another very powerful thing you can do what is base mesh? let's see here so what is base mesh? now we only have these things that we draw in the curve right for this base mesh if I turn it to be 1 you can see this plane appear so what is this? it's actually the things that we contain for the geometry node right so if I set this to 1 it, this will appear if I set it to 0 it will not so it means if I create this on any object for example if I use Susan and I use this on the Susan the Susan disappear but I can bring it back and I can use this curve but let's make another curve let's uh, duplicate this curve then this to be 2 and let's go to Susan and we drag this here because now the curve copy from this so it's still on this face so let's go to here and add a mode and we delete all that so let's draw it on Susan everything is on the Susan it's not like a separate object that contain so we can turn off that and it will not show the Susan so you might think it's just like a, okay not very cool but uh, let's go back to here and let's hide this Susan because we don't need that anymore so now we know we can show the base mesh so what if I copy this modifier let's use like a duplicate you can either duplicate or you can create a whole new one and you just uh, create a new uh, geometry node uh, the CTM but uh, let's use the duplicate so now I duplicate this and I use this curve tool to do that and now uh, the previous curve that we draw is disappear so I can use this base mesh to bring it back we can keep working on this so let's redo this curve let's make new curve make it like a little bit crazier so just for demonstration so now we have these two curve let's make another material new one just set it to be totally black okay so now let's go back to set this second CTM so now we have another curve that is built on top of the previous curve I can set this individually maybe I don't want it to be turned anymore and I can set the size differently so now if I want to uh, control this part I just go to the curve tool and I can do some change for that Okay, so the idea is that you can keep building you don't have to create a brand new one like this you can hide the first one and now we bring it back so if you do it more it will just like uh, keep building on top of the previous so uh, what if you want a shape looks totally different like remember this part so if you just like a change from here it will change both of these because it's using the same geometry node the any change that you change inside of here will be a 
apply to all these two because this is like the core. If you just change the geometry node itself, it will be the same. But if you change anything that is being taken out from the geometry node to this modifier, you can change it individually. And right now, uh, this kind of like a flow curve cannot be taken out. So if you want to change that, you have to make a copy of the geometry node. So if you just click here to make this to be the copy of that, and you see here, it's like a different one. So this is the original one, and this is the copy. Now, if we change here, you can get a totally different looks for these two. So that is every function for this CTM, Curve to Mesh Tools. And then I'm going to talk about the OnePlus, and it's for my Patreon member. So if you want to get these tools, you can support me in the Patreon and you can download that. And you have the array that you can like uh, instancing stuff on top of the curve. So if you got this CTM V1 Plus, let's use that. We can just like uh, switch this to V1 Plus and all the setting actually will switch to that automatically. Only the last part are different. Let's take a look at that. So let's turn off this. Let's focus on the first one. We know we have this array. So what array do is instancing things on top of this line. So let's see if we create a ecosphere and we make it smaller. Like this size. And we drag it to somewhere that we can see. So with this ecosphere, so this array object, if we set it to be this ecosphere, you can see it's uh, instancing on the curve, but uh, it's actually too big because this size is still too big. So let's make it smaller from this part. We just drag this to make it smaller. So you have to drag both of these three numbers to make it smaller. So if I just drag like one direction of this, it will change different axis size. So sometimes that maybe is like what you want. But in this case, let's try to drag them together. So let's see the second one, this array gap. Let's try to drag it smaller so you can get more array so if i set this to be smaller you can get something like this maybe a little bit more gap okay so if i give this sphere like uh, one subdivide and shape smooth so everything will change to here so which is i can set the material for that so if I set this to be yellow, here will be yellow. Okay, like a like an orange yellow. And if I add this, let's try to add this. We drag it some point out. So you can see everything will be applied to that. So I just make some random stuff. So now we have this like uh, some stuff on the face and that's sensing this a little bit more rotate this So now if we don't want to see this original curve here show curve we set it to be zero so now it's only the insensing are showing and that's set this material the metal and now let's try to do some more about this you see this rotation it's actually rotating the like the individual one it's not rotating the curve itself it's rotating the instancing so if you want to make the spiral rotate like a smaller or bigger you still have to add it like a, in the curve section so we got things like that, maybe like this. 
so now this you can make some chrome type stuff right and let's see in the cycle it looks pretty nice if we make some different scale so maybe like this you got the idea that you can really play around with this array let's see what if i change the noise let's give the noise so now you can see it depends on the curve noise so if i show this curve again and i take off this so now if i give the curve some noise this part will affect the array size so if i bring back this sphere like this area is actually become bigger so noise size is actually will affect the curve and also the array so let's make the power a little bit weaker and we can control it like uh, over here as well so using the rotate you can make some animation as well and now we can also change some of this the profile the shape of the curve it will also affect the array stuff okay so now that is the instancing i think you have a lot of idea that you can do with this instancing there's one more thing, it's called real life instancy, right? By default, we turn off. So when I turn on, it looks the same. But um, if I use a, like a remesh, the remesh is here and our instancing is here. So that's turn on, real life instancy. So things disappear because of this number is too big. That's said this smaller so now you see we got something so maybe even smaller okay all this instancing become one object not totally one object but they all being remeshed right let's turn off this realize instancing it means if you don't realize the instancing, modifier cannot apply to that. Even you use like a subdivide modifier, it will not affect that. So that's how you can do that. And even when we turn on this curve, let's see if we turn on the, this curve. So now actually we are showing this curve. So if I set this curve to look like that, and I remesh you will see that only the curve being remesh and this array is now a remesh sometimes that is what you want because the curve is really big so maybe we want the resolution to be bigger it demonstrates the tube how smooth it will be when it's bigger it's you have to have some more resolution to make it smoother or you can take this for the remesh if we turn on this realizing sensing so now the array is merged with the two with using this uh, remesh yeah so now you got this so that is the real life instancing it makes the array become real geometry can be controlled by other things like the modifier and remember we still have another set of ctm right so we can use this and use ctm v1 pass and to different array so let's duplicate this and let's make another different look So maybe I make something like this and let's put it to be a array. Array object and we find this. 
So now it is here and it is too big. Let's make it smaller, take the intensity more, and maybe set this material differently to be black one. And there's one more thing that I didn't mention about this array gap. This array gap, we can tweak this and give it like a different gap size, right? So if we tweak this to be like really large to ten, it will be only one left, like uh, on the end of this curve. So if this end is like a little bit bigger, maybe like this, it will only appear one. But it's only when you hit 10, because I set it to be equal 10, it will be at the end only one. So um, sometimes you want to do that when you have your curve with. So for example, I'm drawing things like this. You can see that the array will only on top of this. It's kind of like a flower or something. It's the stick and the flower is bloom on the end of this. When it is not equal to 10, like smaller than 10, it will not be like that. It will uh, actually on the bottom. Let's make the bottom bigger. So if we want to do it on the bottom, just don't set this to be 10 and it, it will be like uh, probably be only one because this number is actually very big on this scale so so when when it comes smaller it will appear something like that okay so that is the array function for the CTM v1 plus CTM means curve to mesh we use curve to draw mesh so now you can make the design by drawing curve and you can just like a leaf like this if that is you are happy with it's like a very procedural way to do things but if you want to scope more about this that you can do you just have to apply this modifier but one thing you have to keep in mind if you want to apply this modifier with your array you have to set this realize instancing as one so to make it to be realized so if i set it to zero when i apply the array will disappear if i show the curve like i show the curve and i apply the array will be disappear only the curve will remain so now I don't want the curve and I want the array so I realize instancing and I apply and now the array is still here and now I'm apply the other one so you have to apply from the top to the bottom so now I apply this and I want both of these so the curve is one and the realize instancing is one so I apply so the whole thing is become a mesh geometry it's not longer controlled by geometry node so let's go to the edit mode to see that so now you see you have all this geometry that you can actually control so now I can control individual point like that and also I can click L to control individual part maybe I feel like uh, I want this to rotate okay so I can do that so now you have total control of this not controlled by geometry nodes so if I want this curve my mouth is on top of this curve I press L so this curve is being select individually 
maybe I don't want this curve so I can delete this vertex and I can go to the scope mode to scope maybe I like things like that that I can do it's not only for the V1 plus you can do the same thing for the original V1 just without the array right so both of this that you can do so if I use like a So thing, you know what I mean. I'm just mean these tools is too powerful. It's too powerful to use this to do free stuff. You have to make other people pay you. So that is basically for this. I original I want to do a brand new design, but I think this looks pretty interesting, and I will leave that to here. So maybe I'll make another video for I'm just like playing around with these tools but uh, I think in that video very important part is how I control the curve that we draw because that is also very important because right now we actually mostly we draw things like uh, on the face Actually, there's some technique we can bring the curve out of the face or we can draw it like a, in the symmetry or a lot of tips that I can show that in that video because this video might be getting too long. I hope you really enjoy these tools. I put a lot of time make each one of the function is very useful and it really can help you to design so if you want to get a ctn v1 just go download in my gum roll it's totally for free for you guys and if you want to get this ctn v1 plus you can join my patreon you can download that there's a lot of other things in my patreon i hope you guys can join that and i will share more stuff on there in the future I will do some update for these tools and we'll do that in there and if you follow my Instagram I will post the coupon code for V1 plus randomly on my Instagram story you can use that coupon code in my gumroad and you can download V1 plus for free and I will see if you guys still interested in this kind of things I can make more because I really enjoy to make this and I really enjoy to share that with you guys. So I hope you enjoy this video and see you guys next time. Bye bye. And now I'm teaching you how to make any node group that you build or you download from the internet to be an asset that you can just drop in anytime you want. So for example, now we already built this node group that contains a sphere. You just name that to be whatever you wish in the future that you see. And now if you see this shell image, you just right click on there and you see this mark as assist. So click that and you will see this kind of like a book sign. And now you just save this, whatever. You can save, save on your desktop first or you can just save as the place that you store your assets. For example, I save on a desktop. So I save that and that's open a preference window. In this window, go to this file path and go down here, SS library. And here is the library path that I already set. So your might be empty or just one. So you can click at and just find a location, find a file that you wish to store all of that. And you just click at SS library. So you will have this over here so now let's go to that location that you assign just drop that file into this location and now we have this as our access if i refresh that you can see there is the test access sphere so now if i open a brand new blender file 
that you can see is here and then we can just use that when we use geometry node like uh, like this and we just drag this in here and now we can use that for example I make a brand new geometry node I can delete the previous one I just use test SS sphere so now we can use that and this window is like uh, you just like a drag here and you set this to be SS library and you just choose the one that you have assigned so you have this window and then if you want to do some change for your SS so just right click and you can open the blend file so it will open that file in that location as a SS so you, you do any change here and you save the later on you use this SS will be the new one that you have changed so if you download a blend file that is used as a SS so you can just drop that to your SS library location and I hope this helped you and don't forget to like the video and subscribe thank you bye bye